Okay, so this is the latest iPad Pro. It's Apple's highest-end tablet and also their most expensive one. And starting from $800 and going up to $1,700, this tablet is more expensive than your average laptop. So the real question here is, can this iPad Pro replace your laptop? I've been using this for the past 10 months, and this is pretty much a long-term review with my actual use cases of this iPad Pro. So yeah, buckle up and here's what I think. All the current generation iPads now support the Apple Pencil. So you might be quite familiar with Paperlike, that thin screen protector that makes your iPad's display feel like actual paper rather than the slippery glass feel that we normally have. Well, I have some pretty good news. It now got even better. Paperlike 2 has just been announced and it features even more resistance for drawing and writing uh, with an even higher degree of transparency than ever before. It works on the iPad mini, the regular iPad, the iPad Air and the Pros. So yeah, no matter what iPad you have, as long as it supports the Apple Pencil, Paperlike has you covered. Pre-order Paperlike 2 using the link below and thanks to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. Okay, so my previous experience with using iPads has been quite mixed. You see, the iPad 2 was actually my very first iPad and I don't remember exactly why I got it. I remember not being that excited about it. So yeah, I, I think my mom really wanted to try one out or something like that. Anyway, uh, after I got the iPad 2, I used it for a few months and then I kind of got bored of it. All it was was just a larger iPhone that couldn't make phone calls. So basically an oversized iPod Touch. It couldn't really do anything that the iPhone couldn't. Then I got the iPad 3, which I was really, really hyped for because of that retina display, and I gave the iPad 2 to my mom. And then I realized how slow the iPad 3 really was because it was pushing so many pixels with an underpowered processor. By the way, Apple actually updated the iPad 3 to the 4 just a few months later to solve all those issues. So yeah, the iPad 3 was like a failed iPad. Uh, but yeah, I actually stopped using it and even sold it a few years down the line. That was pretty much it. I stopped using iPads and I didn't even have another iPad until the iPad mini 4 came out in 2015 because at that time I was using a small iPhone success and I really wanted a small tablet that I could use when traveling for watching movies and gaming. And I used that for exactly one year after which I did get the iPhone 7 Plus and I stopped using it again just because the iPhone 7 Plus was already quite big in terms of its form factor. And then I stopped using iPads again until the second generation iPad Pro came out. So this was the one before this latest model and that one had that 120 hertz uh, ProMotion display alongside the larger 10.5 inch panel. So yeah, I got a whole deal. I got the iPad Pro almost maxed out in 256 gigabytes, cellular, uh, the Apple Pencil and the keyboard six months after it came out. Uh, since that's when I was traveling for Christmas and I wanted to do an experiment to actually use this iPad as my full replacement for my 15 inch MacBook Pro. And I actually made quite a few thumbnails on that iPad using the Apple Pencil and I did enjoy it but then I switched back to my MacBook Pro in January just because I really need the Final Cut Pro and it was also easier for me to do everything else from a laptop than an iPad because of you know mouse support, external device support and so so much more. So I stopped using it again and eventually sold it. And then a few months after this iPad Pro third generation came out, back in January 2019, I finally got it. I've been using it ever since and I actually just fell in love with it. So this is this is pretty amazing. I, I really love the fact that uh, since you don't have a home button, you can now tap anywhere on the display to wake it up. So yeah, so much more convenient than having to find that specific area on the display, the home button that you have to press to wake up. I absolutely loved how the Apple Pencil magnetically attached to the side of the iPad, which meant that now I was taking the Apple Pencil anywhere, whereas before um, I always had to remember to put it in my bag and I, you know, I couldn't really carry it in one hand alongside the iPad. So it was quite a pain uh, to use and to carry around. So all of this made me use this iPad so, so much more than any other previous iPad that I've owned. Now, these are all things that I've already talked about in the full review of this iPad that came out in last November, actually. Uh, but I was with a review unit, not my personal unit, which again, I only got in January. But I still couldn't use it as my laptop replacement. And that was because iOS was severely limited and the iPad Pro couldn't really do anything extra that, you know, my iPhone couldn't already do. So like I said, it's pretty much the same story or at least it was uh, with this iPad a few months ago. So this was still an iPad. But then earlier this month Apple released iPadOS to the public which is essentially iOS 13 for the iPad and this has completely changed everything to the point where the iPad Pro and any other iPad for that matter can indeed be used as a full laptop replacement for most people. Hold on Daniel, what exactly do you mean by this? Well, First of all, multitasking works as it should. So you still have your two side-by-side -side apps like before, but now one of those apps can also be an instance of the first app. So what I mean by this is that uh, instead of having to run Safari and Notes,
notes side by side, you can now run to notes apps side by side and, you know, have multiple notes and copy paste things between them, just like you can do on, you know, an actual laptop. And on top of this, you can now have even more apps as slide overs and have pretty much as many of them as you want and swipe between them. This is actually even better than on macOS, since on macOS you only have the app expose, but here you have both the app expose, which you bring up uh, when multitasking, and you also have the slide over feature, which we don't have on macOS. So, in terms of multitasking, the iPad is finally a very capable machine now. However, my main issue here is that not all of the apps can be put in the slide over panel and uh, the multitasking panel. Like, for example, the YouTube Creator app, uh, the studio, does not support it alongside many, many others. So it's essentially up to the developers to make their apps available for multiple resolutions because apps that are only made available for the iPad and not the iPhone as well, they will not resize to fit a view, which kind of sucks. So yeah, only the apps that are made for both the iPad and the iPhone, only those would work in slide over mode. Then another new update in iPadOS is full desktop view in Safari, and this is actually a really big one. So previously all the web pages loaded up the mobile view unless you manually requested the desktop view. But even then, things such as YouTube, especially uh, their new creator studio on the web or Google Docs, they didn't work, even with desktop view enabled. And that was extremely frustrating. That's because I needed an actual laptop with me in case I wanted to view Google Docs comments on my scripts, for example, uh, since the mobile app is just horrendous, uh, the Google Docs one, and the web version didn't work at all on the iPad. But now with iPadOS, all websites load the actual desktop view by default, so this means that the Creator Studio works perfectly. Google Docs is also usable as well, even though it's very glitchy and very stuttery. So the web experience on the iPad is finally more similar to what you would find on an actual laptop. Now, it's still better on an actual laptop because of the glitches and the lag that I mentioned before, but hey, at least it's finally usable now. So after iPadOS came out, my plan here was to use this iPad as a full replacement for my 15-inch MacBook Pro uh, whenever I was traveling. Realistically, I still need macOS at work for Final Cut Pro 10, which does not work on the iPad, uh, but aside from that, I could pretty much use an iPad Pro for pretty much everything else. You see, the things that I now do on a daily basis are adding things to my calendar, replying to emails, using uh, our Google Team Drive, researching and scripting new videos, sometimes thumbnails, but actually the more recent ones have all been done by Connor uh, entirely, and I also QC every video that goes live on the channel, and sometimes even make some small changes or fixes uh, if I spot any errors. So yeah, that's the only time where I do require a Mac, QCing a video and of course exporting a video and uploading and all of that. Uh, but aside from this, I can easily live off of an iPad Pro. So what I did was that I actually got myself a keyboard. Multiple ones, really. I started off with Apple's own iPad Pro keyboard. I got this when this iPad Pro came out last year, but that one left a pretty sour taste in my mouth. Not literally, though. So it was very, very thin, and you couldn't even feel the keys properly because of that. Uh, so there was almost no key travel. So yeah, the typing experience on that was horrible, and it was also the most expensive one out of all of the ones that I've tried. So at $180, this thing was heavily overpriced, considering the poor build quality and the almost non-existent key travel and... Yeah, the typing experience. However, what I really, really enjoyed about that Apple keyboard was that it was very easy to take off and put on, since it automatically aligns itself to the back of the iPad using magnets. Now, the second keyboard that I tried was a third-party one, and that was the Logitech Slim Folio Pro. Now, this keyboard had the best typing experience of any keyboard that I've tried in the past few years, and I'm not even joking, this keyboard has significantly better typing experience than even my MacBook Pro keyboard, and even Apple's own external keyboard that they sell. And this is just so amazing to type on. It's also backlit, and you also have function keys, which are lacking from Apple's own iPad keyboard. It's by far the best keyboard that you can buy for an iPad when it comes to typing, but aside from that, it is extremely, extremely bulky. So without a case, the iPad measures in at 5.9mm thin and 466 grams. Now with that case, it's 20.6mm thick, so it's insanely thick, and it weighs 1024 grams, so just over 1 kilogram. So yeah, this keyboard makes the iPad 3.5 times thicker and 2.2 times heavier, pretty much defeating the whole idea of an iPad that's supposed to be that ultra portable lightweight tablet that you take everywhere. In fact, this keyboard makes the iPad Pro even heavier than a 12 inch MacBook and almost the same weight as a 13 inch MacBook Air. So yeah, great typing experience, 
but a really bad keyboard in terms of the design and the portability. And then we have this other keyboard that I've tried, the bridge keyboard, which is actually the exact opposite of the Logitech keyboard. So this one looks absolutely incredible. Not only that, but it is fully made out of metal and it also has the exact same color as the iPad Pro and when it's fully closed, it actually looks like you have two iPad Pros stuck together. So absolutely an amazing design. And then you also have this hinge mechanism that allows you to position the iPad at any angle that you want, unlike the Logitech one that only has one single angle, and the Apple one, by the way, has two, but that's that's it. Now, since this one is made fully out of metal, it is actually quite heavier than even the Logitech keyboard, weighing in at 1,040 grams. So yeah, a tiny, tiny bit heavier than with the Logitech keyboard, but since it's much thinner than the Logitech one at just 14 millimeters, and it's also the exact same size as the iPad Pro is, it feels so much more portable and easier to hold than the Logitech one does. So this one is by far the best looking iPad keyboard that there is, but aside from that, the typing experience on this is just horrible. Like, the keys are very small, there's way too much space in between them, and the keys are not even leveled. I mean, take a look at that. Uh, some of them are even tilted towards one way or the other. Oh, and when I scripted on this for about 30 minutes, the W key came off. I'm not even joking. And the shift key also fell off as well. So I managed to put a shift key back after about probably 15 to 20 minutes of multiple tries. Uh, multiple failed attempts, but the W key, I put that one back as well, but that one kept falling off over and over again, and it still does the same thing now. Like, personally, I've never seen a keyboard with a worse build quality than the bridge one. Uh, even the USB Type-C port, the charging one, is sitting at a wrong angle. However, Bridge is definitely on the right track when it comes to how an iPad Pro keyboard should look like and work like. But personally, um, between the two or the three, I actually prefer the Bridge one more than the Logitech, just because it's so much easier to take the iPad on and off. Uh, so that's my choice. But again, typing on this is very, very hard with the keys literally falling off. So yeah, if you want to buy any of the keyboards or anything that I mentioned in this video, then uh, I left the link for everything in the description. Uh, and you're also supporting the channel by uh, by doing that. So yeah, thank you. So, yeah, this is how I've been using this iPad for the past month. As a laptop replacement at home, you know, scripting on it, replying to emails, and so far this thing has been pretty great. My only complaint here is actually the lack of good mouse support, since holding your arm uh, literally like this on the iPad for quite some time, for multiple hours every day, uh, vertically with a keyboard attached to it, well, that's uh, that's very uncomfortable. You find it very, very uncomfortable after just a few minutes of use. So using this like this for like 10 or so hours a day is just a nightmare. Now, Apple did bring mouse support with iPadOS, kinda, so it's recognized as an accessibility tool. And then you get this massive dot that doesn't necessarily represent a cursor, but mostly a finger, as iOS was not designed with cursor support in mind in the first place. So it works, but it's it's not great. However, we do have external hard drive support uh, with iPadOS, which is pretty awesome. So you can now connect pretty much anything you want to this iPad, including a USB Type-C dock, and have multiple hard drives connected to this and manage your data that way, all of which wasn't doable at all before. However, external monitor support is still very, very limited, as you can only mirror the display, and it will also have the iPad Pro's aspect ratio. So yeah, still an iPad to an extent. Okay, so in the end, the iPad Pro unfortunately cannot replace my main computer just yet. But it's actually on the right path, um, because aside from external monitor support, uh, improved mouse support, and just running Final Cut Pro 10, it can actually do everything that my MacBook Pro can, which I'm quite impressed. So while the iPad Pro cannot replace my laptop just yet, it actually can for the majority of people. So if you're more of like a casual user and you just use your computer for only a few hours a day with you know quite a few breaks in between so that your hand doesn't get strained, well, in that case, the iPad Pro is perfect for cases like that. And it's also the perfect device for you to take on holiday or when you're traveling or you know when you're commuting to work since it's very light and easy to carry around. And I do honestly think that Apple is, like I said, on a very, very good path uh, towards this. But until then, this iPad will remain my secondary computer, something that I will only use when I'm traveling and when I don't have important work to do. Outside of that, I'll just use it at home for watching movies, uh, you know, reading emails, simple stuff like that, and when I want to connect it to my MacBook as a second monitor, because you can actually do that natively now in macOS Catalina with Sidecar, or if you use a third-party app such as Duet Display. So yeah, thank you for watching. I would love to hear your thoughts on an iPad replacing your laptop as your main computer. And if any of you have actually done that, I would love to read how and what do you actually use an iPad for. Oh, and don't forget about the Pixel 4 giveaway that we're actually doing. It ends in a month, and the full details are in the description box down below.
So yeah, this has been uh, pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to check out our articles section of the website if you want to read articles of, you know, scripts of videos like this one and even more interesting ones that we don't really do videos on on the channel. So uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in the next one. This is Enough Tech, signing out. Cheers.